So now in the previous video we have learned about the text fields in the material UI and now that you know that how the text fields work and how to handle the state of a single text field and now in this video we will handle the form with multiple text fields inside that. So now we have three text fields and now we can just have a form tag after this div to add here the form and then we can just remove this action from there and then we can just wrap the text fields from this form. So after that now we are now handling the state of just name. So we need to do the same for the email and the password as well. So now so if we define the use state for the email and the use state for the password as well. So in future if we have the multiple forms like if we have the form with 20 or 30 text fields then we will be defining states for every text field like if there are 30 text fields and then we need to define the 30 states. So this is not a good solution. So for that now we can just define here inputs and then instead of this set name it would be the set inputs. So now we have defined the inputs and the set inputs but now instead of this empty string it would be an object. So this use state will be having an object and then we will be handling the state of this use state with the object like here the name property will be there and then this will be the empty string initially it will be the empty string and then we can just define an email and email will also be an empty string initially and then with the password will also be the empty string and now instead of defining the value equals to the directly name we can just define an inputs object dot name and same for the text field of the email as well it will the value would be equals to the inputs dot email and same for the password as well it would be the value would be equals to the inputs dot password but if you will just remove this on change because now it is of no use and now if i will now save and if i will now move on to the react app once again but if you will type anything into any form it won't accept any value so if you will try out then you can see it won't accept any value there because here we have just defined the state but we are not updating the state whenever any data is entered into the text field. So for that now we can just declare a unique identifier for every text field to know that this text field have the id or the name equals to the objects property like the name email and the password. So we will just declare the name would be equals to the name as we have defined inside this inputs and then we can just copy that and then we can just define an identifier in the email as well. So it would be the name, it would be the email and then we can just define the same identifier inside the password as well. It would be the name, it would be the password. So now we will handle the states according to the name property according to the unique identifiers. So now you can see now we have one thing is common. So now you can see now we are handling the state from the name, email and the password and here also we have the name, email and the password. So now we can just generate a function as the const the handle change in which we'll be handling the state of every input throughout this function only. So here we will be having your own change would be equals to the handle change and here also we can just do same we can just handle there as well and there as well. So now inside the handle change so now we need to move on to the handle change so now it gets the event property. So after every input is entered so we need to move on to the handle change and then we need to identify that which identifier or which text field has the latest state and then we need to update only that text field. So for that we can just have a set inputs. Now we need to set the state of the inputs but the input state will be having the previous state as well. So to get the previous state we can just have a callback function with the previous state inside that and then after that now we will update the state and now it will be an object. So I have now given an object there. So now first it will be the previous state that we already have inside the inputs. So this is a spread operator. So it will get all of the previous state of this inputs with this callback variable and after that now we will target the properties like here we have the text field of the name. So we can just target the property of the event dot target dot name. So now you can see the name is the same inside these inputs as well and then we can just define a value as the event dot target dot value. So if you will just do that now once it will move on to the name and then it will enter anything inside that so it will just move on to the event dot target dot name which is the name property and the name property is name and then it will directly go to the inputs like name and then we have the value so once it will reach the value so it will go to the value 
and same to the email once it will reach the email so it will target the email property of the inputs and then it will generate the value of the email and same for the password if i will now save and if i will now move on to the application once again if i will now enter anything now you can see now we can just enter any value inside the text field and here also and here also so now these all are accepting the values and now we need to do one more thing and now after the form is submitted now we need to handle the on submit prop so after we need to submit the form so we can just have a function as the handle submit so this function will be created before the return statement as the const handle submit will be equals to the event and then we need to add an event dot prevent default to prevent the default behavior of the form as it sends the data to the html page inside the url so we need to prevent that with the prevent default and it will just prevent the page from the refreshing as well so it is a good approach and then after the text fields now we can just define a button as the type will be equal to the submit as we do in the normal html so the buttons type will be equal to the submit and then we can just have a submit inside that so now inside this handle submit now after the form is submitted now we can just log the value of the inputs with the inputs so if i will now save and if i will now move on to the application once again now you can see if i will now move on to the inspect and now you can see we can just move on to the console and once i will add anything inside this form like we can just have a name as the nickel email as the nickel at the rate test.com and then we have the password of one two three four five six so if i will now just click on the submit now you can see all of the values are now being stored inside this state you can see the name equals to the nickel we have the password of the 12456 and then we have the nickel at the rate test.com so everything is working fine and now we are able to handle the form inside the material ui so this is all about this video so now we'll move on to the next component of the material ui